today on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. These eight kids, four scratch players, four handicap players, bowled a three-game Swiss to winnow their respective fields. The top three in each division survived to compete in two mini stepladders to crown two champions this week who will each sign the coveted trophy pin. Celebrating Junior Bowling, elevating Junior Bowlers. This is Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Live on tape from AMF Woodstock Lanes in Woodstock, Georgia. This is Coach Randy, welcoming you to episode 93 of Prodigy Bowlers Tour, the Swiss Badger. If the title hasn't already clued you in, maybe this will. Not only did they bowl a three-game Swiss to winnow the field down to the top three in each division, but they're bowling today on the PBA oil pattern known as Badger. 52 feet of oil, over 30 milliliters of oil. So you've got plenty of oil, and it's spread all the way down the lane to within eight feet of the head pin. They say straighter is greater. Well, today, most players won't have much choice. For those who don't know what a Swiss is, it's all match play. A random draw at the beginning sets the initial pairings for match play. But then after that, all subsequent games are position rounds, with first place bowling against second place, third against fourth. With just four players in the field in the scratch division and four in the handicap division, the pairings were easy to figure after each game. We awarded 30 bonus pins for each match won. With just four players in the field in the scratch division and four in the handicap division, it didn't take us long to complete three games of qualifying. And after those three games, here were the standings. In the scratch division, Nolan Kemp finished fourth and is the alternate today. Qualifying in the number three position is Tristan Davis. He'll face our number two qualifier, Nick Dissinger. The winner of that match will bowl for the title today against the number one qualifier, Christian Manel. After bowling a 126 in his first game of qualifying, Christian put a different ball in play that he had sanded to about a 240 grit and threw a nine bagger to post a 256. Then he followed that with a 230. He's the only player in the field who seems to have a good look today. But we will begin with the handicap division. And after leading at the end of games one and two, Reeves Dickerson fell all the way to fourth to just miss the telecast today by two pins. He's the alternate. Bowling in the first match today is our number three qualifier, Faith Roper, who fired a 194 her third game to come from way off the pace to sneak into the top three. She'll face our number two qualifier, Hunter Moffat. Hunter is coming off a win last week on Prodigy Bowlers Tour, where he fired his personal best, a 269. If he shoots anywhere close to that today on Badger, I think we'll all be mightily impressed. And the winner of that opening match will face our tournament leader, making his first appearance on Prodigy Bowlers Tour today, Hampton Dickerson. Hampton rode his handicap of 82 pins and bowled pretty close to his average while everyone else was struggling in qualifying on this difficult oil pattern. Can his luck hold out one more game? We'll know in about 40 minutes. But right now, it's time to get this thing cranked up. In our opening match between three-seed Faith and two-seed Hunter, both players are getting the same number of pins in handicap, so they'll be bowling straight up. And Hunter, being the higher of the two qualifiers, had the choice of starting lanes, and he has opted to lead off. And on 52 feet of oil, you're not going to find a whole lot of hook on the lane. Not much ball motion today. He'll go cross lane at the 10 pin.
And you almost don't need a plastic ball for your spares because just about anything you throw isn't going to hook much. But there is a conversion for Hunter in the first frame, and marks are at a premium on Badger. Now watch this angle Faith is playing. She lays that ball down at about the fourth or fifth board, and she's pointing it left toward the pocket. You don't see that very often nowadays. They used to play that way more back in the day. She too will go cross lane at the 10. And she gets it. Well, the rule of 31 states, you subtract 31 from the length of the pattern, which in this case is 52 feet. 52 minus 31 is 21. That would indicate you want the ball on the 21st board as it leaves the end of the pattern, but the end of the pattern at 52 feet, that puts it four boards left of the pocket. That's not gonna work. And that's why they say the rule of 31 is just a, a general guide. The way you usually see players play Badger on the PBA is they'll just lay the ball down at about 15. They'll play about the third arrow, which is the 15th board, and just let it hook about two boards. And that's about all the ball motion you're going to get. Look at this! Faith converts the 6-7 split. And that'll get Hunter's attention real quick. Watch this. Over the fourth arrow, and this will go straight to where the 10 pin sits. And slides the 6 over into the 7. A beautiful conversion. How about that? All right, Hunter. And this is the challenge they will face today. The tendency will be to help that ball up toward the pocket. And if you pull it just a little bit, it's going through the nose or even crossing over. Hunter with the 4-7. And he just barely gets it. You will also see some of the players go with a slower ball speed today to try to give the ball a chance to read the lane. There's not a lot of friction out there. Just a little left of his target that time. Goes through the nodes, leaves the three. When you can leave simple spares on a tough sport shot like Badger, you're ahead of the game. And Hunter takes care of the three pin. Now Faith on lane 40 coming off that amazing spare she made in the second. And you could tell she didn't point that one quite as far to the left. And you're not going to get any help from this oil pattern. You miss right, it's going right. And she leaves the one, two, nine. Not as difficult as it may look. You've just got to hit it on the right side of the head pin. Just like you're shooting a strike, really. And she takes care of it beautifully. Two good spares in a row by Faith. Well, three if you count the 10 pin she made in the first. And as I mentioned earlier, marks come at a premium today. So spares are your friend. That's always true on a sports shot, but especially today. It's got to get up. 
And that's almost a repeat of what she had in the third frame, but this time the 1-2-9 has company in the middle with the five pin. You shoot it about the same though. Put it on the right side of the head pin like you would for a, a pocket strike. Get that ball to drive through and get the five. But she misses wide right and we have our first open frame of the match. So advantage Hunter. Well, and once again, he gets away with a high hit and leaves just the three. He had the 310 peeking at him for an instant, but the 10 went out, and that leaves him a much easier spare here with the three pin. And he takes care of it. Hunter's a good little spare shooter. We've talked about that before on Prodigy. That is way left. And now he's going to have a challenge. The one three nine. You don't really want to hit this exactly like you would a strike as the ball can drive through, send the three to the right, and miss the nine on the left. Kind of hit light pocket, let that three drive straight back into the nine. About like that. With a lighter ball, you can hit a little higher on the one pin and count on it deflecting right, as it did there for Hunter. That's five spares in a row to start. Faith up on the right. And as we mentioned before, the temptation when you know the ball's not going to hook is going to be to steer it a little left. And that's the temptation they will have to fight because you know you can't miss right. It's not coming back. Faith threw a couple of them right of the head pin, so the natural reaction is to try to help it up a little bit. And she just pulled that one a little left of target. So she's got the 10. She made this earlier in the first frame. And gets it again. So we have a little time out here for a couple of the folks here from our host center. AMF Woodstock Lanes in Woodstock, Georgia. Who come to take the Kegel oil machine away and put it up. Once again, left of target. This time the three pin has company. And Faith has a little split, but you know, she made the 6-7 earlier. What's a little 3-10 to her? Nothing. You want to play this from the left side of the lane, it'll close the gap between the pins. But that one sails a little wide for her, and that's another open. So now 28 pins separate these two as Hunter moves back to lane 40. A light hit this time. And that could have been just about anything. He could have left a bucket or a 2-4-5, but he breaks it down and has just the 2-4. And this is much easier than some of the other possibilities he could have had. But you can't send it wide expecting it to hook. Not on Badger. 
So there's an open frame, and that tightens this match. Hunter's lead now just 15 pins. Well, this time he gets a, a Brooklyn wall shot. It's not how, it's how many. Watch this, he missed his target left. Off his hand, that's over the third arrow. He's not trying to hit that. It heads straight for the left side of the head pin and he gets the, the reverse wall shot. A great break. Now Faith, got to go to work. And she does. She stuffed that one right in the pocket. Seven pin late to go, but down it went. This is that angle she's trying to play. She'll lay it down on five. It's about seven at the arrows. And that ball just tracks right for the pocket. That's high flush. That one was left of target, but she gets away with it. And she will not complain over a Brooklyn strike. Here's her footwork. Bates got pretty good footwork. She's She walks very straight. The lead is down to five. And now Hunter's got a problem. The six, seven, ten. Well, you know how to make it. You saw Faith shoot this. She had the six, seven without the ten pin. If you can make the six, seven, you can make the six, seven, ten. Here's how Faith shot the six, seven earlier. This is how you make it. Just tick the right side of the six, slide it over. gets a little too much of the six pin so an open frame and look at this he just handed the lead to faith with just the ninth and tenth frames left that was a pretty good ball right there just hit a little light it could have carried a wall shot but he leaves a shaker seven Little double dribble action. But it covered the spare, so Faith takes a seven pin lead into the ninth, working on a double. And she's lucky to get away with a nine count. That went right through the nose. But when you're in a tight match like this on a tough oil pattern, you will take easy spares. Oh! She just missed it, though. And now, she hands the lead right back to Hunter. I told you Marks would be at a premium. Well, she's got to do something here in the 10th. Put a little pressure on Hunter. Well, how about that one right there? It was a little high. It wasn't as high as it looked. That ball was going so straight. You knew it wasn't going to go too high. But that was almost a Jersey squasher. That thing just went right through the nose. Watch this. It looks like it wants to just be a little trip four high hit, but she had the 4-7-10 looking at her for an instant. How about a double right here? That would really put the heat on Hunter. Trying to go for that back-to-back -back high hit double, but not to be. But she's done enough work now to where she's going to force Hunter to mark. 
whether she makes or misses this seven in. Hunter's got his work cut out for him. Boy, she'd like to have that seven pin over in the ninth frame right now. If she could have made that, this would be a much different match right now. But as it is, Hunter needs to fill 15 pins. He's on a spare, so he's got to watch his count on the first ball. And when you need to fill 15, the best thing to do is put a strike on the board right away. Now, he gets two shots to get five pins. That makes his job a whole lot easier. And he only needs one. He needed five pins. He gets them all to fall except the five pin. And Hunter is moving on to the championship match. Faith is going to look back on this and say, that missed seven pin in the ninth frame is what cost her. And most of the time, in tournament bowling on sports shots, you can usually point to a missed spare. But it's a 168 to 162 victory for Hunter, and he will face Hampton Dickerson when we return. Away. This calls for something special. Yes. Have a bumper time bowling at Northern Bowl Coronal. Well, it came down to the 10th frame, and Hunter delivered a clutch strike when a spare would do. So he takes the semifinal match over Faith, 168 to 162. But now his task grows a bit tougher. Hampton Dickerson is getting 82 pins in handicap. Hunter is getting just 44. That's a handicap differential of 38 pins. So we'll be adding 38 pins to Hampton's score in the very first frame, so you won't have to add a thing. And as we head into the championship match between Hunter and Hampton, Hunter's going to need to bring his A-game to overcome that much handicap on a very demanding oil pattern. Now Hampton, you got to figure, is not used to bowling on a sport condition. But he held his own in qualifying. Of course, those 82 pins of handicap might have helped. Handicap differential, once again, is 38. We'll add it into Hampton's score. There's an eight count to begin. He doesn't take a lot of time to set his feet. That's one of the first things we teach these kids. He just kind of takes off. And that one drifts just a little left of his desired target. So an open frame, nine out in the first frame. 38 pins added to that gives him 47 in the first. And Hunter gets a crossover to start. And while he's spotting Hampton 38 pins, I'll bet he'll take all the Brooklyns he can get. That 
was just fractionally high. I think when he let it go, he was afraid it was going to go much higher than it did, but... Like I said before, it's not going to move much. A 4-7. He'll move right, go cross lane at it. That's got to get up. You cannot swing it out to the right, expecting the ball to bend back. Not on Badger. So Hampton with a 41-pin lead. And look at this guy. He must have to catch a train or something. Misses the head pin. The one, two, seven, nine. Here's how you make it. Put it right there in the 1-3 pocket area. Hope the ball doesn't deflect too much to the right. It should get the 9. Oh, but he just doesn't get enough of the head pin. It slides it around the 2. Ah, there's two spares in a row that he was close on, but just missed. This little guy is seven years old. He won't turn eight until the end of summer. Just misses the head pin left. Leaves the one three nine and he is not waiting around. He is ready to go. Gives it a shove out on the lane. Maybe this time you'll get him. Nope. Leaves the nine, so another open frame for Hampton. Not often we call Hunter the elder statesman of the pair, but here you are. How about a ripper? And Hampton gives him some congratulations right there. You got to like that. Hunter playing about the 12th board at the Arrows. It hooks a little bit, just enough to send the five pin left. And watch Hampton in the lower left corner. Watch his reaction. He's as excited as Hunter. That ball just does not want to get up. It's almost like a putt on a golf green. You can't give the hole away. You can't give the pocket away. If you aim right of the pocket, it's not going to find it. And you'd think that he might have expected that to hook a little left to get over to the left side of the head pin for the washout, but it does not do it. Hampton in a hurry. If you blink, you'll miss him. Well, his brother Reeves almost made the show, but fell to fourth. See what he has to say. It's Reeves Dickerson, everybody. You haven't seen him on Prodigy before, but you're seeing his brother. His brother's over there bowling. What would you tell him if you could whisper in his ear right now? Let me bowl. Let me bowl. <laughs> You'd say, let me bowl. <laughs> oh, look, we have a photo bomber. It's Nick. He's standing by. He's ready to get out there. Well, you bowled pretty good. You were, like, in the lead most of the way, and then the very last game of qualifying, your brother got you at the end. And everybody slipped past you. You'll make it next time. These two guys are about as delightful a pair of kids as you would ever want to meet. But Hampton's still looking for his first mark of the match. And now Hunter has pulled it within seven.
and puts one high flush in the pocket. Not much doubt about that one. You put it right there and most often all 10 are gonna go down. You put it right there, and most often you're going to leave a split. But he gets seven and leaves the three, six, ten, which is a bit of a complication in and of itself. Lots of ways to chop this. Distraction, so we have a balk. Hunter will reset and go for the spare. And he covers it. Well, I had my camera out. I caught a great little shot of these two. The brothers, Hampton and his older brother Reeves, watching Hunter shoot this spare. How do you like that? Reeves in there, rooting for his little brother. Well, he's been around the pocket several times today. Well, he's just not having much luck. There's the 5-7. You can make it. Put the ball on the right side of the 5-pin and slide it over. Let's see how Hampton plays it. Well, he got that one a little wide, and he was not happy about it. I'll tell you what, Reeves is the one who really wanted to be out here bowling on the show. Once again, Hampton puts it near the pocket, or the Brooklyn pocket. That could have gone. See if he can get a spare this time. Match is still close. But Badger just will not let you hook it back. So another open frame and Hunter takes a 16 pin lead. Well, Hunter had struck every time on the right lane this match. This time he leaves a wall shot seven. That could have gone. You gotta be careful with this. And he gets it. And Hampton gives him a little round of applause. I love it when the kids root for each other. Good sportsmanship. Well, that looked like a pretty good shot, too. Right in the pocket. Nearly had an 8-10. But the five managed to nudge out the 8-pin. So Hunter's got just the 10 to contend with. He'd been having problems with the 10, but he's kind of worked that out. And he makes another one. And there's Hunter encouraging Hampton. Get up there and get you a strike or a spare. Well, didn't quite want to get up. He's got three of them. Let's see if he can get a bunch more. Uh-oh. Look out. Well, he seems a little dazed, but... These little guys, when they're that age, they're like made of rubber. He will bounce right back up and be ready to go again. 
The approaches here at AMF Woodstock are notoriously slippery. He may have just slipped, but it certainly caught him by surprise. But undaunted, he's ready to go again. And he gets six. Leaves the one, two, four, seven. Sometimes referred to as the picket fence. Put the ball over on the one and two and you ought to get it. Sometimes you can get it on the right side, but you gotta hit the pin in front. On every spare, you gotta hit the pin in front. Well, this match is probably out of the wood for Hampton, or pretty close. Hunter's gonna put it away here, I think. Man, he's been close every time on this right lane. But that is enough. And Hunter is gonna claim another victory on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Even without the spare, doesn't matter. He can throw the rest of them in the gutter and it will not matter. The best Hampton can do now is 135 with three strikes in the 10th. Hunter's already got that. And then some. And now he's gonna show us a trick shot, hopefully. He's got the washout, the one, two, four, ten. I like the way he plays this. He moves over to the left side of the lane. Ooh! Well, not to be. It's gonna be a 147 for Hunter. And now Hampton will finish out. Not the game he had hoped to bowl, but I have a feeling he had fun today. I suspect his brother's gonna have a few words with him when they get home about that last game of qualifying and how Hampton knocked his big brother Reeves out. How about it? No. Well, that's okay. It's a 110 with the handicap differential added in. It's Hunter who's gonna sign the coveted trophy pin. And then we turn our attention to the scratch division. Next. What's even more exciting than bowling? League bowling. That's all America. Go for it, Eddie. We really need a strike. I love to hear that cheering. You'll hear it every week. Just join a Bowl America League. New leagues are forming now. So come to Bowl America. Yay! Where thousands cheer. Well, Hampton's good fortune kind of ran out in the championship match. But he was an awfully good sport and a really sweet little kid. He and his brother Reeves will be back, I'm sure. And Hunter, as we all know by now, is like the tide. He just keeps rolling in week after week. This young fellow seems as determined to win as any of our bigs. And for the moment at least, this win puts him in the lead in the 2018-19 season for most wins on the year. Of course, Nick will have a chance to match him when we get to the scratch division today. But before we go there, let's spend a moment with these two littles who just finished their match. Here they are, the finalists in the handicap division. And Hampton? I thought he was gonna kick my butt. You what? I thought he was gonna kick my butt. Well, he didn't quite, but he kicked everybody's butt in the qualifying round. 
to get to the number one seed, and then it just kind of didn't quite come together for you in the championship match. Well, my, but my prediction was, you're pretty happy, aren't yeah, you? My prediction you're pretty was, happy that you made the show. Yeah. And you had a chance. Yeah. My prediction was I was going to lose. So was it any fun? Yeah. It was fun making the show for my first time. It's pretty awesome. And fun. Hunter. This is becoming routine for you. Yeah, I don't know where to sign. Oh, oh like this. you're running out of room. So, this gives you how many? This gives me nine wins. Nine, that's a record. Yeah. And you know who you passed? This guy. But he's gonna have a chance to get nine of his own. A little later on. Yeah, well, I'm so proud of you, bro. No, oh, you no. Well, maybe. Yeah, let's go, you man. Could get done. You, could, you could win today. Oh, shit. Well, I'm first in Tristan. I've never beat Tristan on Prodigy. Hey, this one you, you what? I said I'm first in Tristan. I'm screwed. You've never beat Tristan on Prodigy? I don't think so. If I have, I've lost, beat him once, but I've lost four times. He's been your kryptonite. I know that. This young man, the future is so bright, man. It's so bright for you. He has a bright future. That's so true. Hunter, the winner again on Prodigy. Congratulations. So now we turn our attention to the scratch division as our three seed, Tristan Davis, takes on our two seed, Nick Dissinger, for the right to face Christian Minnell in our title match a little later. Nick being the higher qualifier had the choice of starting lanes and he usually chooses to finish first. That means he'll let his opponent lead off. So Tristan is gonna start the match on the left lane. And that ball sails right on him. Tristan gave the Aberlon pad a good workout, adding quite a bit of surface to this ball, hoping to get it to move as much as he possibly could. He loaned his Aberlon pad to Christian just before their match in qualifying. That's when Christian went off with a nine-bagger and dropped a little 256 on Tristan. I don't think he's gonna loan his Avalon pad again. Ooh. And that spare attempt sails wide. And Tristan begins with an open. Well, as I mentioned, in our handicap division, marks would come at a premium, and that has been true for the scratch players as well. Scoring has not been very high. And by the way, look how far up on the approach these guys are starting. Nick's going with a three-step approach. And that's amazingly versatile for him to be able to switch like that. Watch this. One, two, three. And he makes it look as easy as one, two, three. Watch this hit. Ten back. Now Tristan is doing the same thing. He's also going with a three-step approach, starting way up. I am amazed at their ability to do this. I can't do it. If I want to slow down the ball, I'll just take tiny little baby steps. But this time, Badger's lack of area shows its ugly face, and Nick is left with the 6-10. That ball goes a little high. We will see this a lot. And we may see a little of this, too. Spares being a little more difficult than they're used to. As Nick's attempt at the 6-10 conversion sails wide, he goes nine out. 
and that evens the match. Tristan, look at him starting way up, way over on the right. Three steps. And that ball goes high. Just like with the handicap division, the tendency when you see the ball sail wide right is to try to steer it, help it up. And when you do that, it tends to want to go high. And now he's got the 310. Here's how you make it. Shoot it cross lane and fit the ball right between the 3 and the 10. And he misses wide right, and it's back-to-back -back opens for Tristan. But he doesn't look too panicked, because I think he knows that Nick will face a few bumps in the road along the way, too. So think about it, when you're bowling on a tough sports shot, you just have to be patient and know that your opponent is probably going to struggle also. It's real easy to get down on yourself. You just can't. Just keep grinding. That was a pretty good shot right there. It just went fractionally high. The thing about these balls that they've added all the surface to is, and you will see this, They'll sometimes look like they hook early, and then they just flatten out. That's partly due to the surface and partly because the oil goes 52 feet down the lane. There's a mark for Tristan. And he's got to be breathing a sigh of relief. Saying, I'm on the board. Yes, he is. Well, once again, the people at AMF Woodstock rolled out the red carpet for us. They are very gracious hosts here, and we surely do appreciate their hospitality. Uh-oh. Nick. What looked like a pretty good shot when it left his hand. He's throwing it so slow, and with his usual pretty high rev rate. That ball jumped just a little, 4 six, ten. And he whiffed them all. Good heavens. Not what we're used to seeing, and just like that, Tristan has the lead. Both players with back-to-back -back opens. Well, I told you marks would be precious commodities today. But Nick will not deviate from his game plan. He stays up close to the foul line, stays with the three-step approach, and nearly carries a wall shot. That was a good ball. When they're tough like this, you just got to play smart, try to keep the ball in play, make nice commercial shots. They may not be spectacular, but just keep yourself in the ball game. If this were golf, I'd say just keep hitting fairways and greens. The birdies will come. All right, Tristan with a two-pin advantage at the moment. And that's what he's looking for right there. Playing a very similar line to what Faith was playing earlier. Starting way out to the right and pointing it up. Really old school. If he's swinging it right at all, it's no more than about a board. That's a good shot. 
10 in the pit. How about a double? Those have really been rare. But he trips the four and gets one. And that could be huge. As Tristan extends his lead to 12 pins. Watch his footwork. He will drift left. It's about eight at the arrows. And right in the pocket, just a little high, and gets the friendly trip of the four. Now, just like Tristan earlier, Nick needs to stay patient as well. Now, this will test his patience. This will also test his accuracy. We saw Faith make the 6-7 earlier today. Hunter had the 6-7-10 and got a little too much 6-pin. Let's see what Nick can do with it. You want to just tick the 6 on the right side. And he just got a little too wide. So that's eight out, and now Tristan's lead grows to 27 pins. The one thing you gotta be careful of on these sports shots is you don't wanna fall too far behind because it is tough to close ground. Lane available for Steve F. and Richie. Lane's available for Steve F. and Richie. And I hope Steve S. and Richie get their lane. But Nick turned around as soon as he let that one go. He knew that was left of his target. And now he's got the 3-6-10. Now you watch when he bowls at his spares. He will start from his usual position back on the back of the approach and take his customary six steps. And he covers the 3-6-10. Well, now Tristan with a golden opportunity. Working on a double and a 27-pin lead. Can extend it to 37. If he could catch a third strike right here. And there it is. That was flush. Little drift to the left. He hits about eight at the arrows. And this just tracks right to the pocket. And that's 10 back. Watch his reaction to it. He knew that was good as soon as it left his hand. It was just a matter of standing there waiting for it. Do I hear four in a row? I do not. Tried to roll the two from behind. But he leaves an easy spare we talked about earlier on these tough sport conditions. If you can leave easy spares, you make your job so much easier. It is so easy to leave all kinds of stuff. But now you can't be missing single pin spares. Well, that breathes new life into Nick. That 36-pin lead just shrunk to 24. But Nick, who has not thrown a double all game, needs to get on the stick. Well, there's one. Can't throw it any better than that. says he's playing a little deeper 
about 13 at the arrows. He actually swung that one out a little bit. Now, Nick can do that because he's got a higher rev rate than Tristan. But he's not swinging it out that far to the right. And he's throwing it super slow. Can he catch a double here? Yes, he can. That one came in light and shredded the rack, even as it was fading away. Get a second look at this. That ball did not drive through the pins and move left when it hit the, the pins. It deflected right, but still sent everything left. That means that ball had a lot on it. Even though it wasn't climbing when it hit the pocket, it sent everything over to the seven. Tristan says, I'm not going anywhere. That strike, just to let Nick know that he's still here. This match is going to come down to the ninth and 10th frame like so many of them do. Lanes available for Jerry and Becca. Lanes available for Jerry and Becca. Well, Tristan backs off just at the sound of Jerry and Becca's name. that didn't break his concentration. He needs a strike right here to extend his lead. He hates it. He turned away immediately. You could tell it was wide. When he turned away, he knew it was gone. But it could have been worse. Could have left a washout or most anything. He leaves the one, two, four. Choppable, but not the hardest spare in the world. Just needs to take care and make it. That's not the way we recommend making it, but it's a spare nonetheless. Now, the bad news for Tristan is, by virtue of not striking in the ninth frame, Nick can now get up and throw a strike in the ninth, tenth, and eleventh and shut out Tristan but he'll need three strikes starting right now to do it. And as we have discussed already, stringing him has not really been in the cards for most of the players today. Christian was the only one that got a big string today in qualifying. But there's a good one by Nick. And that reduces Tristan's lead to four pins. And now if Nick can throw the next strike, he'll take the lead. Even as solid a hit as that was, it still deflected to the right when it hit the pins. This is the all important ball for Nick right now. If he can catch a strike here, he will force Tristan to double in the 10th if Nick doesn't throw another strike. And there it is. I think Nick thought that has a chance as soon as it left his hand and he watched anxiously. Yes, sirree, there it is. So now, he will step up with a chance to shut out Tristan if he can throw the next strike. He'll need a few more pins on the fill ball to do it, but 
This is the strike he needs right here to put an end to this match for all intents and purposes. Doesn't like it. It was left off his hand. He knew it. So his lead shrinks to three. So here's the situation. Nick needs one of these three pins to force Tristan to double. If Nick were to happen to whiff this spare, Tristan could tie him with a strike and spare. But with that conversion, that puts all the pressure on Tristan. Tristan will need the first two strikes in the 10th and then four pins on the fill ball to get past Nick this match. Must strike on the first two balls. And Tristan will take a little extra time to collect his thoughts. He struck the last three times he was up on lane 40. But he pulled that one. And it's going to be Nick who moves on to the championship match. Well, just didn't make his best shot. Sometimes that happens. There is just so little margin for error on this oil pattern. You just have to be perfect. And he just pulled it a little. I hesitate to use the C word. I don't think it's a choke. I just think, you know, sometimes you don't make your best shot. He'd like to have thrown that ball instead. It's a 187 to 183 win for Nick, and he is moving on to the championship match where he will face Christian for the title next. Hey, it's me, Coach Randy, with exciting news about a new way you can help support Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Over the past couple of years, we've had a number of Prodigy fans say they'd love to offer something in payment for the Prodigy content seen each week on YouTube throughout the bowling season. Well, I'm pleased to announce that Prodigy is now on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Now, in case you're not familiar with it, Patreon is a platform where YouTube content consumers like you can connect directly with YouTube content creators like me and pledge a small amount of money each month to support the work that goes into creating the content that you enjoy watching. It's based on the age-old concept of patrons. About 30 to 40 hours of work goes into the production of each and every episode of Prodigy Bowlers Tour. So if you enjoy the content on Prodigy Bowlers Tour each week and you'd like to support the show, please check it out at patreon.com slash prodigy bowlers tour. There are four affordable subscription tiers, and each one offers a different reward, up to and including sneak peeks of shows before they're released to the public, exclusive behind-the-scenes content that only members will ever see, and there's even a tier that will enable you to get all that and get your name in the credits each week as a producer of the show. You'll be helping me to be able to continue making the show each week and even reinvest some of the money into improving the show going forward. Thanks for checking it out, and thanks for supporting Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Like this. All jeans on sale, up to 50% off, no time to spare.
Well, strikes were hard to come by, and yet both of our players managed to string together a turkey in their match. But in the end, Nick left the door open a crack for Tristan, and Tristan wasn't quite able to take advantage of the opportunity. So it's Nick Dissinger who moves on to our championship match, where he'll face Christian Minnell. These two met in Game 3 of our Swiss qualifier today. Christian got the better of Nick, 230-148 to 148 that game, to take over the number one position heading into the stepladder. But now they're on a different pair of lanes, and this is for the championship. One of these two will be signing the coveted trophy pin in about 20 minutes. And Christian had the choice of starting lanes. He usually likes to go first, but he's changing it up this time, letting Nick start. So Christian will finish first. And Nick rips the rack. And that makes a statement right out of the gate that he is lined up and ready to rock. Watch this one again. The ball looks like it's fading away when it gets to the pins. You see it deflects to the right, but he's got enough stuff on it that that ball sends everything left into the seven. All right, Christian. And that ball deflects around the five, and he nearly had the five seven. Now what Christian did earlier was he took an Avalon pad and just added a ton of surface. I think he used a 240 Avalon pad on this ball, and it should hook. Covers the spare, and we're all even through one. But I think what Christian is going to find on this pair of lanes is that they're not hooking quite as much as the pair he shot his big games on. He was able to stay on the same pair, and with that high friction surface, oh boy, he wore a little track in where he could bounce the ball off the dry track. He doesn't have that on this pair of lanes. And here's how you make the 410. Early in the match, I think I'd go for it right here. Ooh. Boy, he gave it a go. Didn't miss by much. See if we can see just how close this was. That was pretty close. Maybe a half an inch. Half an inch at a little more than 60 feet. Well, Nick sure would have liked to have gotten off with a double, but he will have to settle for a strike spare beginning. And if he can get it, it'll be enough to give him a 14-pin lead out of the starting blocks. And that's what he gets. Both of these players going with a high surface friction ball. See a lot of players try that on Badger. That's more like the line I would have expected these guys to play. More down the center of the lane, not a lot of belly. See if we can pick up where he's laying it down. He lays it down at about 17 or 18, swings it out to about 15 at its widest point.
playing about two boards of hook with all those reds. Now Christian has got his ball sanded so much that it's going to hook a little more. Problem is, is it's going to tend to hook early and then flatten out. And the bowler is not used to seeing that shape. And if they do see it, they usually know they've got the wrong ball in their hand. And they go with something weaker. But anything weaker on this oil pattern, and you won't get the ball to face up at all. So... It's, it's a puzzle. That wasn't a bad shot. It just fractionally high. But you saw it. It looked like it hooked right away and then kind of straightened out. And that's what happens when you get a high surface friction ball. Well, Christian's going to have to work on his swing plane a little bit. He takes it back behind his back. He gets a little out to in swing plane going back. And then it bounces out to the outside coming down. And it goes from right to left. And that's why he almost missed that spare on the left. All right, Nick. And look at that one, man. That five pin whistled over into the seven, just like that, like he was bowling on a house shot. Let's take a look at a little comparison. Nick back in January on the left, and Nick today, that last shot you saw on the right. In January, he was going with a six step approach. Today, he's using three. We have these two shots synced up to their release. They will release the ball at exactly the same moment, but watch how much more quickly the ball gets to the pins in the shot on the left. See, they're synced up. There's the release. But he's throwing the ball so much slower today, it takes a little longer for it to get to the pins. And that's more like what we expected to see a lot more of today. 10 pins, weak 10s in particular, on this long oil. Haven't really seen very many though. He covers it. But now Christian's got to uh, find something here. Still looking for his first strike. That's not what he's looking for. The 4-6. Well, he's just trying to overpower the lanes. He's just trying to hit it hard. He's catching it on the upswing with his fingers. You watch it. He's lofting the ball more than I would on Badger. He bounced that one out. Got it back up on the pin deck. It just didn't go to the right side of the lane. But now the lead is 38, and Christian has just half of the game left to catch Nick. Well, we saw Nick 37 pins behind against Tristan, and he came back and won, so anything's possible. Look at that big loft. That is not the way you play a 52-foot oil pattern. 
When you've got long oil, you want to get the ball into a roll early. You loft it like that, you delay the roll. Well, these kids will learn eventually that you cannot dictate to the lane how you're going to play. It's like a football team that knows it's got to take what the defense gives them. You got to take what the lane gives you. The lanes will tell you how you've got to play them. Nick's playing the lane correctly. He just missed on that one. Pulled it left. And when you have no margin for error, every miss is magnified. And he nearly ran by the six pin again, like he did earlier. But Nick has a clean game going, six frames in. While Christian has a couple of opens and no strikes. Well, and that one goes high, and now Nick has a little more to be concerned about. The 310, the baby split. Move left, put the ball on the right side of the three, let it deflect over into the 10. That's how you make the baby split. Well, you saw him look down. I think he's stuck at the line. He did not expect to be able to make that on the left side, but he did. Sometimes Lady Luck will visit you and give you a kiss. See, that big loft just the way players used to try to fight lanes that hooked a lot. They loft it a long way to get it to skid farther before it gets into a roll. But on long oil, you want it to get into a roll sooner. You want to lay it down shorter, not loft it farther. And this game is just getting away from Christian in a big hurry. Another mistake, and now he's 46 pins down. And Nick doesn't look like he's going to be backing up anytime soon. And once again, you saw how that ball looked like it tried to hook, and then it just sort of flattened out the rest of the way. That would be the first sign that he needs to switch to a different ball. He does not need a ball that's just going to hook early and then straighten out. But I'm afraid it's not going to matter much. Nick with a 57-pin lead and... I think he's going to put Christian out of his misery here in the eighth frame. The best Christian can do is 168. Nick is liable to get there before Christian has a chance to get up off his seat. Solid hit right here. Little love tap on the 10. What'd the Beatles say? All you need is love? All you need is a love tap. Well, that time the ball got away from Nick, but guess what? That was enough to put him over the top. 
And so it doesn't matter. Nick has won the match. So even with that open frame, Nick has all he needs. And now Christian looks up as if to say, sure, now it strikes. I think he just had the wrong ball in his hand, and I think he was just trying to do something on these lanes that these lanes just won't let you do. See that loft? Can't play 52 feet of oil like that. Watch it again. Watch how much loft he's getting on the ball. He lofted that thing halfway to the arrows. But that's just a give up shot. He knows he's beat. So Christian will put his stuff away and get ready to head home. It's Nick's day today. And even going through the nose like that, Nick will finish with an open frame. He'll be in the 180s. And the two winningest players on Prodigy Bowlers Tour in 2018-19, Hunter and Nick, have both done it again. And we'll get Nick to sign the coveted trophy pin and visit with him when we return after this. Where are you bowling this summer? Hi, I'm your old Uncle Merle, and when I go bowling, I like to go where there's pleasant surroundings and happy people. And to me, that means University Lanes and Palomar Lanes, the complete recreation centers where you find the finest in bowling conditions. Billiards, coffee shop and lounge, complete pro shop, even a children's playroom. Go where the happy people are. In San Diego, it's University Lanes, University near college. Escondido, it's Palomar Lanes, 511 North Escondido Boulevard. Let's go bowling. Let loose at Valley Bowl. Take the Valley Highway or Academy Exit to security. Well, there you go. Another week of Prodigy Bowlers Tour in the books. In the handicap division, it was Hunter Moffat who held sway to put his name on the coveted trophy pin once again. And here in the scratch division, Nick Dissinger was not about to let an 11-year-old pass him for the most wins on Prodigy this season. At least not yet, anyway. He held off Christian in the championship match. And you know what that means. It's another trip to the winner's circle for Nick. Hunter, who's been keeping track of this closer than I have, says that he's now at nine wins and that you were at eight. So this would mean that you are now at nine. Is that your counting of it as well? If you say so. Well, I, I'm i going by what Hunter said. I'll add him up eventually. You said but nine is a record. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. We haven't seen you in a while. Where have you been? Working. Where do you work? At a McDonald's. What do you do there? Work. And work and work? Yes. Especially when I got off at 2 a.m. last night. Well, you get to sign the McCoveted McTrophy pin. Yeah. And Mc congratulations to you. Thank you. This weekend, April 27, 2019, we're in Columbus for the finals of the Georgia State Pepsi Tournament. 
Then we return to Bolero Roswell on May 4th for our final Prodigy event for several weeks that's open to visitors. So if you bowl youth league anywhere in the Atlanta metro area or anywhere else, if you want to come visit us, mark your calendar for May 4th, 2019. That's the next date we'll be accepting visitors and the last one for a while. After that, we'll have several weeks that are open to just our Roswell kids as the season begins to wind down and we draw closer to the second annual Prodigy Tournament of Champions on June 22nd. But that's it today from the Swiss Badger Classic from AMF Woodstock Lanes in Woodstock, Georgia. This is Coach Randy bidding you a fond spart in your home and strikes a plenty on the lanes.